the congregation bow as we await your presence. Your presence is here now. Your presence is here things to get done today, we are going to have our quarterly blessing of, well, anniversary blessing of baptisms. Am I getting that out right? This might be a long service for other reasons. Um, other thing that's happening when the offering is brought up, we're going to bring up the pledge cards that have come in, the commitment cards that have come in so far, and uh, bless them. Uh, understanding some of you don't have them in yet, and that is always seems to be what happens at Messiah. It takes uh, many more weeks to get them in. Um, as far as announcements, next Saturday, two things are going on. You can begin your day with breakfast with Santa. That should appeal to the younger ones. But come have breakfast. That's a fundraiser uh, that's put on with, by the um, uh, parents of the daycare, of our child care center. In the evening at 5.30 will be our Sunday school Christmas program right here. That's often a highlight and well attended. Prelude will begin at 5.15. Pardon? The prelude will begin at 5.15. Come early. We have talented kids that want to show off their talent, and they will begin at 5.15. 5.15. Very good. That's always a highlight. Um, those of you that want to donate poinsettias in the honor or memory of someone, there are forms in the back. And I think that's all the announcements I need to make right now. Uh, our theme today is peace, and we'll be lighting the candle of peace. John the Baptist comes in our 
gospel lesson. Let us pray. Almighty and all loving God, we wait. We wait, sometimes impatiently, for your son. The son Isaiah called the Prince of Peace. Help us to be his peace daily. Help us to, as the psalmist says, pursue peace. He brings us that peace. Let us grasp that peace and be that peace. In his holy name, amen. Please rise and join in singing. the anniversary of their baptism as well as the parents or significant other not their significant primary caregiver to come forward yes please come come come
Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. I have what you need, but you keep on searching. I've done all the work, but you keep on working. Can't find the remedy. Just come to the well. You can spend your whole life chasing what's missing, but that empty inside it just ain't gonna listen. When nothing can satisfy, the world leaves you high and dry. Come to the well And all who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find what their soul song for The world will try but it can never fail So leave it all behind you are, when your last prayer is spoken, just rest in my arms a while, you'll feel the change, my child, when you come to the well. God claimed these beloved young people in holy baptism, we made sacred promises. Parents promised that. And parents, you can read your promises right up there. To faithfully bring our children to worship, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. Sponsors, Godparents, and this congregation promised, congregation, to nurture them in the Christian faith and to support them and pray for them in their new life in Christ. So each parent, I want you to take and place your finger in the baptismal font, get it nice and wet, and make a sign of a cross on uh, on your loved one. There's going to be various body parts like the ear. That's what we begin with. That you may hear the good news of Christ, the word of life. Parents, and here's what the parents are supposed to say. Receive the sign of the cross on your ears. That you may see the light of Christ illuminating your way. Parents will say, receive the sign of the cross on your eyes. That you may sing the praise of Christ, the joy of the church. Receive the sign of the cross on your lips. That you may dwell with, that God may dwell within you by faith. Receive the sign of the cross on your hearts. That you bear the gentle yoke of Christ in serving. Receive the sign of the cross on your shoulders.
that God's mercy may be known in your works. Receive the sign of the cross on your hand. And now, that you may follow in the way of Christ, receive the sign of the cross on your feet. All right, to all of you I ask, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. When you were baptized, an assistant minister handed your parents a candle, just like this. And then lit your candle. So I'm going to light Chandler's, and Chandler, you light and pass the light on. And the assistant minister said, let your light show so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And the congregation said, we are proud that you are part of God's family in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the new life you give us through holy baptism. Especially we ask you to bless each of these young people on the anniversary of their baptism. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please rise and share God's peace with those around you.
when despair for the world grows in me, I come to the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water. And the psalmist, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. When everything feels hopeless, when we feel as dead as the dry bones in Ezekiel's valley, God calls us away from the workaday world. God calls us to breathe in the holy breath of peace. When we light the candle of peace, we breathe in the one who restores us. Whatever we face in life, God's spirit of peace will dwell within us. As we wait for God's time, in faith, we light the candle of peace. Our peace is in the Lord our God. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. this time, it's in this place, that we await His presence, we await His presence, His presence is here now, we listen for His gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of St. Luke, the third chapter. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother, Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea, and Tra Traconius, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I guess we already shared the peace. So you may be seated. I'm looking at all the kids we have out there. I guess we should have a children's sermon. So please, come on up. All right, guys, what do you think this is? Blocks? Yeah, blocks. Blocks to blocks. A puzzle. Well, I'll take that from you, Zach, a puzzle. And um, if we... The, the Apostle Paul made a statement in Philippians. He said, I believe that the one who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. Okay? I believe that the one who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. When you were baptized, God Almighty began a good work in you. And the Apostle Paul, yeah, and the Apostle Paul says, and I believe God will bring it to completion 
in the day of Jesus Christ. So this puzzle, I want you to think of your life as sort of a puzzle. And guess what's happening with this puzzle? God, who is a better, who's better at putting puzzles together, <laughs> is putting your life together and bringing it to completion. Okay? God is at work in you. God is at work in you to bring to completion the good work you began in you. All right. Shall we try to put this together? What will happen if I don't get it together? You have to start all over again. Yeah, I might have to. <laughs> you guys are just pretty good at knowing what this is. This is supposed to go on last. <laughs> Do you have brains? Yeah. Are you? Oh, everybody has brains. You have, except, for you. except for me. You might be right on that one. You know what? I put it together this morning only once, and I can't remember. But just remember this. God, who began a good work in you, is going to put you all together in the day of Jesus Christ. Okay? Anyway, the whole thing is, when it gets all together... And this goes in last. It becomes it becomes a cross. Ta da! <laughs> hey, maybe maybe afterwards we can play with this and put it together. This is my microphone. Okay, so yeah, it's my microphone, and people can hear me. Isn't that something? All right, everyone, we're gonna say a prayer. Fold your hands. Repeat after me. Gracious God, Gracious God, we thank you that you are at work in us, and the good work you began, you will bring it to completion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I came across a um, quotation by a French philosopher, theologian. And he said, humanity is a, thinks it's a physical being. Humans think they are a physical being trying to be spiritual. And he said, but the truth is, we are spiritual beings trying to be physical. Now, I've pondered that for a long time, but I think what he is basically saying is that we have negated, we have forgotten about, we have left out the spiritual world out of our lives, and as a consequence, we are suffering for it. We are spiritual beings who just so happen to be living in a physical world. We're not physical beings trying to be spiritual. An example, a couple of examples of that are how our world seems to have turned so much. There's an actual spiritual battle going on. And I don't want to get heavy into uh, the culture wars because I'm really not a culture warrior, but 
a couple of weeks ago in one of my sermons, I talked about how surveys have shown that Christians are more generous and more happy and fulfilled than our non-Christians. And somebody took exception to that and said there was a study that just came out that said Christian children, children of religious people, not merely Christians, but all religious people, are more ungenerous than people of no faith. And it just was, that was all some people needed that gl they glommed onto that when I, I decided to go research that a little bit. And blogs started coming out, oh, you see, we're just as good, we're even better than those Christians, than the religious people. Even a, a guy um, who's a sports broadcaster came out with his little article on how all oh, the, the non-believers are more generous than the believers. Sports guy, really? It just shows you how people wanted that so much. Scott Simon, yesterday on Weekend Edition in the morning, talked about um, how after the killings in, in San Bernardino happened, the politicians, almost all of them, sent out tweets asking people to pray. Uh, pray and hold the, the loved ones of these murdered people in your prayers. And then the tweet started and the blog started on your, your prayers are not going to do anything. Prayer isn't going to solve this problem. And uh, all the way down to Zach Ford. Oh, the Daily News, the New York Daily News, front page. God isn't fixing this in bold letters. And then Zach Ford at Think Progress said, if you think talking to the voice in your head is helping anyone but yourself, you're wrong. I'm not going to be bashful about saying so. Scott Simon said, the people in his office told him, that's called prayer shaming. I thought that was an interesting term to hear on NPR, prayer shaming. People looking at people who are praying trying to make them ashamed of that practice. But you see, our prayers do mean something. Our problem in our society with 355 mass killings this year alone is that there are not enough thoughtful Christians being thoughtful in expressing themselves. There are not enough thoughtful Christians being thoughtful Christians. That perceiver of America, Alexis de Tocqueville, wrote Tocqueville, what sustained the unique American democracy were the voluntary associations like churches that lead citizens to choose to obey laws that governments cannot enforce. The unique American, what sustained the unique American democracy were the voluntary associations like churches that leads citizens to choose to obey laws that governments cannot enforce. An example, you think the government can enforce these laws? Unless you voluntarily obey them, there's no law that can be enforced. Now, they might catch you and punish you, but they can't make you obey the law. 
Case in point, as you're speeding home over the speed limit, who's enforcing that law? Now we exceed the speed limit, why? I know you're looking at me. I exceed the speed limit because I get by with it. My Beamer cruises at 90 really nice. Churches and other voluntary organizations are mediating organizations that help us all together. We learn. Yes, we obey laws. We support one another. We help one another work out our problems and our issues. And that's what has kept our democracy strong. We are very needed. But what does it call for? We as God's people, we need to be thoughtful Christians acting like thoughtful Christians. Jeff Miller, who is an uh, evangelical Christian, he's written four books and he has a blog. On his blog, he, he had a blog about Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and he was just shocked that Dietrich Bonhoeffer used the sign of the cross on himself. And he said, as an evangelical Christian, I didn't think Protestants would ever do anything like that. So it made him search and find out why. Why did Bonhoeffer do that? And Bonhoeffer said this, Oh, by the way, he found out that Martin Luther told his people all to cross themselves. Martin Luther in the small catechism says, bless yourself with the Holy Cross. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, what we do physically affects us spiritually. Whether it is lowering our gaze, raising our hands, bending our knee, or crossing ourselves, physical actions have a qualitative and spiritual effect. What we do physically affects us spiritually. Signing, Bonhoeffer said, is objective. There's something tangible and actual about tracing the points of the cross over one's body. Then Jeff Miller quotes something from C.S. Lewis's book, Screw Tape Letters, where the Master demon, demon sends, says to the junior demon, Christians can be persuaded that the bodily position makes no difference to their prayers, for they constantly forget they're animals and that whatever their bodies do affects their souls. Bonhoeffer saw crossing himself it was a way he identified with Christ, crossing himself was the way he communed with God. Crossing himself was a testimony to other prisoners and to his guards that he belonged to Christ. We're spiritual beings. What we do physically affects us spiritually. Our country needs our spiritual presence more than ever if we truly want to be a culture of peace. John the Baptist, in our text, is the forerunner coming to announce the coming of the king, make the path straight, the, uh, take down the valleys and make the, uh, uh, take down the mountains and make the valleys um, low, or fill them up so that the, the roads are nice and straight. Whenever a king came to visit a community, they sent ahead an inspector, a city inspector. He was going to make sure you cleaned up the, the road, no mud puddles, make it smooth so that when the king comes to town, the king's coming. Uh, anything that is uh, unsightly, you want to clean up from your town so that... Uh, 
nobody that the king won't have to see it and endure it. And I, if there happens to be any incorrigibles in town, maybe you want to put them in jail for a couple of days until the king is gone. Of course, things that we wouldn't uh, see doing. But that's what the forerunner to the king would do. Now John the Baptist comes. He's the forerunner. The king is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming into our hearts. Prepare the way. You're spiritual beings. Prepare the way. Get rid of all the, the trash, the garbage that's preventing you to live as this true spiritual being you are. He suggests forgiveness, baptism, for repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Repentance and forgiveness, cleaning out the garbage. Our world yearns to hear of people forgiving one another. People's lives need to be restored through forgiving one another. Remember out in western Kansas, get a call, a couple is in the hospital, they had to travel 50 miles to the hospital, the woman, the wife, had an aneurysm traveling 50 miles. That alone should have killed her, but she was still living when they got her to the hospital and they put a respirator on her, kept her, keeping her alive artificially, go and talk to the husband, and, and you know, he, he's certain we need to pray for her recovery. And we did have those prayers. And after a week or two, and the doctors are saying, one in a million chance she's ever going to wake up. And you ask the husband, do you want to pull the respirator? you want to just let nature take its course? No, 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 no. We've got to keep her. We've got to give her every chance we can. Week after week, about six weeks now had passed. And he called me to the hospital. And he said, Pastor, my wife and her sister inherited the family farm. We divided it exactly in half. And one year, several years ago, we were combining, and we didn't know it, but we combined just a short 18-inch strip of my wife's sister's land. And she came over, and she was so angry, and she yelled at my wife. And the two have never spoken since. And then he said, Pastor, Now that my wife is dying, she wants to come over and help me. She wants to sort through the clothing. She wants to help clean the house. Pastor, I do not want her in my house. What do you think? The only thing that could be said was, this is the time to forgive. So that night he went home and he met his sister-in-law. And they talked and started going through things. That night, the man's wife died. And I've always thought, did she know? Was she just waiting for forgiveness to happen? We are spiritual beings. 
our world, our country, needs our spiritual presence, needs thoughtful Christians acting and living thoughtfully, repenting, forgiving, confessing. Amen. Please just stay seated and enjoy the special music. of God Mary did you know Oh Mary did you know Oh the blind will see the deaf will hear and the dead will live again The drum will speak the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nation? Did you know? Heaven's perfect land And the sleeping child you're holding Is a great I am
disciples of your son Jesus. Help us to see daily the abundance of your blessings in our lives. Guide us in the use of all that you have provided. We pray that as we dedicate these commitment cards, as well as the commitment cards we still expect to receive, that you would bless the sacrifice of those making those commitments. We pray that you would help expand the resources of these cards that these cards represent to meet the needs of your mission among us. Help us to put our trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And gracious God, you are a God of peace, and we pray that you would come to all the nations, inspire heads of state and regional leaders with a passion for justice, bring peace throughout the world. We pray especially for our country and yet another mass shooting, the latest in San Bernardino. And we pray that you be with the families of those 14 who have died and those others who are wounded. We remember the people of France, Syria, and Afghanistan as well as, as other places. We pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, come to everyone in need. Heal the sick. We pray especially for Ken Bohannon, Karen Bowman, Katie Brady, Linda Brashear, Pam Cole, Kelly and Lucy Cowell, Jeff Dykeman, Ron Fells, April Hollinger, Larry Hopper, Debbie Huff, Dustin Jones, Alan Kamens, Jim Lampy, Richard Law, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Adam Miesenbrink, Noah Miller, Shauna Nelson, Bob Oakry, Lynn Peterson, Lori Pettit, Cindy Plaster, Carl Severson, Florence Stilwell, Kylie Timberberg, Ann Wilbur, and Willis Melgren. Are there any others? Gracious God, we thank you for the lives of all the faithful. We pray that you comfort those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, God of compassion, come to our congregation and our com community this Advent. Help us to prepare for your coming. Make us gifts to one another, that no one remains destitute or despairing. Lord, in your mercy. Please rise. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. 
Remembering therefore his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on his, this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
cleanse me from within, and make me holy, purify my heart, cleanse me from my sin, deep within, breathe fire, my heart's one desire. of our Lord Jesus Christ through the gifts of his body and blood strengthen keep and unite us now and forever gracious gracious and holy God you have called your people together understanding that we are not always able to understand your plan but knowing that you will guide us on the right path you have chosen for us lead us as we go out with good courage your hand leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord, now and forever. Amen. By the way, I, didn't, uh, I did not say that the experts that looked at the one survey that said religious children were ungenerous, the experts asked, why were his results different than all the hundreds of surveys that showed just the opposite? So they saw a scientific problem there. Receive this benediction, excuse me. <laughs> I'll finish my sermon out in the parking lot if anyone's interested. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
to glory to God in the highest glory glory in the highest guided by the gospel we welcome all to worship make disciples hunger for ministry nurture you gather Glory to, glory to God. 